Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Tim Versions from Amplified Vitality, and in this video we're going to be discussing insulin sensitivity. Now, insulin sensitivity is super important because it is the primary hormone that determines the glucose entry into your cells. So we've talked before about the stress metabolism and the healthy metabolism, and how when you go through respiration, which is the healthy metabolism, and you use glucose through that metabolism, that that is the most efficient way to produce energy. It uses the oxygen and produces the most carbon dioxide, and overall it just has the best benefits for your body. Well, when we think about the complex systems that have evolved in the body, the most complex ones, like the brain, can only use glucose, and that's because it needs that efficient energy production in order to operate. So when we start to slip into the stress metabolism, which is to say when we're under some sort of stress like fasting or exercise or something like that, our body will start to release fat from fat stores in order to allow the less evolved cells of your body, less evolved tissues of your body to burn fat as a backup fuel, reserving glucose for the brain and for other complex systems. Now, why, does, why is that important? What does that have to do with insulin? The point is that this is the primary reason that insulin sensitivity starts to go down. And it's the primary connection, the primary mediator of why the stress metabolism causes the diabetic state, the insulin resistant state. And the reason is because of something called the Randall cycle. So when the uh, fat is released into the bloodstream, it gets released as free fatty acids. These free fatty acids now in the blood will get picked up by cells and used instead of glucose. They actually compete for entry into the cell. And therefore, even if insulin is high because you've just eaten a high carb meal, if your free fatty acids are high, that insulin will not be able to push the glucose into the cells as quickly. And therefore they will compete and therefore glucose will stay high in the bloodstream. Insulin will stay high and go even higher to try to push that glucose out. We don't want to have too much glucose in the blood because then there can be problems with that as far as the balance of all the systems within the body. And so the insulin is actually helping to push that glucose down and get it into that nice range. Now, people are often worried about high insulin uh, in relation to fat gain and obesity, but also for heart disease risks and other health complications. And this is true. High insulin is very damaging uh, if it's left high for too long. But the solution is not to cut out carbs. Too many people cut out carbs in order to lower the glucose in the blood so that now insulin will lower and they won't have those problems. But this is going about it the wrong way. It's putting a band-aid on the problem. The problem is not that insulin is too high and therefore if you take away glucose, insulin will lower. The problem is that your cells are not responding to insulin. In a super, super high insulin sensitive state, you can eat something like a starch that has a lot of glucose molecules that will raise your blood glucose and usually will result in having your insulin raise. But because you're so sensitive to it, the insulin won't raise much at all. It will actually stay very baseline, very low, because as soon as the glucose goes into the blood, it's a, the insulin is immediately able to signal the glucose into the cells and there won't be any problem at all. Now this is the state we want to achieve because in this state, glucose is still being used in the respiratory metabolism, the healthy metabolism with all of its good byproducts, but we're not raising insulin that much. We're not raising insulin to the point where it has those deleterious effects. So the question now becomes, how do we create this situation? Well, the first way that we really need to understand is that we need to lower the free fatty acids in the blood. If the free fatty acids aren't competing with glucose into the cell, your insulin sensitivity is going to be far higher. Now, of course, that very basically could just mean reduce the stress metabolism, which means eat plenty of carbs, sleep well, get lots of sunlight, do light exercise, um, you know, stay away from a lot of those intense emotions that, uh, or let go a lot of, of a lot of the stress emotions that can um, have such a powerful effect on your physiology. And that is all very true. But there are also some quicker ways that we can get this to happen. To explain this next part, I'm going to use the uh, analogy, the comparison that we have seen in bears in the wild. So bears go through a hibernation phase during the winter. And during this phase, they are put into basically a metabolic shutdown where they are conserving as much fuel as possible. Um, the serotonin is raised, all of these kind of things that kind of help the body go into a tranquilized state to preserve the energy. 
When the bear comes out of hibernation, it is in a full-blown diabetic state, meaning that it does not respond to insulin at all. And the way that the bear comes out of this natural cycle and comes out of the diabetic state, and is also the reason why we associate bears with honey, is that the bear will go and eat lots and lots and lots of honey. This honey, within one to two weeks, will take that bear out of the diabetic state and back into a fully insulin sensitive state. And the reason this is happening is because the glucose and the fructose in the honey are working synergistically to help to improve insulin sensitivity. Now, glucose is the main molecule in starch. So when you eat starch, tons of glucose goes into the bloodstream. Uh, when we talk about blood sugar, we're talking about blood glucose. That's what we're talking about. Insulin pushes blood glucose into the cells. Now, when we talk about fructose, usually in the mainstream media, it is demonized and said that it's a really, really bad thing. And there are reasons for this. The, there are certain states that fructose can have a harmful effect that if you are in it and you're not actually understanding why it works. But in general, fructose is actually a very helpful molecule for your metabolism. And the reason is because it actually does not require insulin in order to be used. So if you think about that for a second, if you are highly sensitive or highly resistant to insulin and you have this full-blown diabetic state well you can still get carbs into your cells to burn through the respiratory metabolism if you don't require insulin and the way you do that is with fructose so fructose will go straight to the liver and normally it will get stored as glycogen or it will be burned if you are in this diabetic state and you get fructose to the liver and the liver is able to now burn it well now you're going to create respiration in the liver so that it, it, it's working properly now it's going to signal to all the other cells that it can that respiration can resume and that you can move into the healthy metabolism. And this happens through things like thyroid hormone conversion, which is the liver is responsible for. All these things start to happen when the liver starts to work better and the liver starts to work better in a diabetic state if you can get the, the sugar into the cell for burning in the respiratory metabolism. And fructose is able to do this. Now, the potential downside of this is that if you eat too much fructose or if you eat fructose when you have a high polyunsaturated fat diet or a high polyunsaturated fat environment, is that the liver can also turn that fructose into fat. Now, if the liver stores that fructose as fat, now the liver will be congested with all this fat that slows it down, and now it won't be functioning as well as it would in a lean state. And so now this fructose is actually adding to the liver fat and slowing it down. But again, this is only happening because of the polyunsaturated fats or from consuming too much fructose at a time when your liver can't process it properly. Now, having said that, your liver can also export fat into cholesterol, which is important for the steroid hormone synthesis, but that's another topic for another day. As far as we are concerned, we want to consume just the right amount of fructose in a very gentle way that's going to help your insulin sensitivity improve and help your liver to start working better over a period of time. And it's actually interesting because you can actually massively improve your insulin sensitivity in a relatively short time if you do it right. So what's the right way to do it? How do you do this? The way that I recommend most strongly to do this is to under eat during the day and then overeat at night. So during the under eating phase, of the day, you want to consume small amounts of sugar in the form of fruits and honey. Fruits and honey both have glucose and fructose in them. They have lots of fiber and lots of nutrients and vitamins and minerals that are really important for the workings of the body. When you consume them in the underfed state, what you're doing is allowing that fructose to go to your liver and do its work without having too many fats or too many, too many polyunsaturated fats or too many other nutrients and calories that are going to push that conversion of fructose into fat. So instead, you're just ramping up your liver quality by eating just a little bit of fructose throughout the day. Now, of course, you're also combining this with glucose, so you're actually getting some more of the systemic effects as well. Now, the way that I like to do this is to get a bunch of fresh fruit, apples, bananas, berries, um, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, all these different peaches, pears, all these different fruits that you like, anything that you like. Um, have them on hand. Start your day off with a warm cup of bone broth and that will help prepare your digestive system for the day. Then have a nice apple and that apple is going to give the right fiber to help, again, help your digestive system and provide a little bit of fructose and glucose to get this process going. Now throughout the day, the goal is to just have fruit here and there, not overload on fruit, but just here and there have a couple pieces of fruit and 
stay in that light, empty state, but continue to keep providing this fructose for your body. Then about an hour before your final meal, mix in some honey with some warm water, salt, and lemon. This drink is really helpful and it's going to provide lots of good fructose and glucose along with the minerals and vitamins that are found in honey. And it actually is going to prepare your body for the bigger meal that's coming later on in the night. So because you're having this, this drink about an hour or two before you eat your big meal, your body is going to be ramped up and using carbs in the proper way. So now when you eat those bigger starch meals with potatoes or pasta or rice or whatever it is, your body is going to now respond far better to that insulin because the fructose will have enhanced the way that your liver is functioning. Now, the second thing that you can do with this is to make sure that you're lowering the free fatty acids. If you're having the fruit throughout the day, the presence of carbs naturally will reduce the free fatty acids in the blood. So you're keeping your body in a nice, light, but stress-free place. You're not overdoing your digestive system, which is, has its own stress effects on, on the body. You're taking it nice and easy, nice, easy digestible foods that provide the sugars to ramp up your metabolism in a very soft and light way. Then, because your body is now prepared, fully prepared for this big digestive meal, now you go into the bigger meal and you're able to assimilate all those nutrients beautifully and perfectly because you have your body is now sensitive to the insulin and can use the carbs properly. In addition to this, you can also do certain things to help reduce the free fatty acids that are raising in the blood. And the one that I like best is to actually have aspirin, take aspirin with your high carb meals. If you eat a lot of starch, then the amount of free fatty acids in your blood will directly affect the amount that your cells will respond to insulin. So if we can lower free fatty acids, then we're going to improve the way that we respond to glucose when we eat it. Aspirin actually helps to stop the breakdown of fat into free fatty acids in the bloodstream. And so having it with a high carb meal helps to naturally push down the free fatty acids, opening up a space where now the glucose can be used for the fuel that it's supposed to be used for. Rather than moving into that backup stress fuel of fat, we can stay burning carbs and keep the body in a happy, healthy state. Now, by eating this way, you're naturally going to be consuming all the calories you need for the day. Just because you're going through an undereating phase and an overeating phase doesn't mean that you're not going to be consuming the total calories of the day that you need. Of course you are. But going through the undereating phase helps to ensure that the fructose is used correctly. And then when all the carbs are eaten at night, it helps to ensure that those carbs are used effectively. And so you're really taking advantage of these different envir uh, physiological environments at the right time so that you are going to be burning fuel in the best way possible. Then you throw on the aspirin on top of that with a high carb meal, and you're gonna be enhancing the way that your body is storing and using the glucose even further. So try this one out, go through your day eating just fruit, uh, keep yourself nice and light and, and empty. You wanna have a little bit of that hunger feeling. If you start to feel uh, the hunger completely gone, if you don't even feel hunger at all, that's usually a sign that maybe you've pushed it too far and now you're actually uh, too underfed and your metabolism is starting to shut down a little bit. So in that case, make sure you have a little bit more fruit. Usually if you eat fruit, you'll feel that it actually makes you not hungrier, but lighter and emptier. There's a, a certain quality to it that you'll feel. And that quality is what you're really looking for. Uh, that ensures that the metabolic machinery is still working, that things are still running, even though you're in an underfed state. Then have your big meal, eat it with your aspirin, uh, enjoy the relaxation and the uh, relax that comes from eating a big meal like that, and use that time to really recover all of the processes um, that your body needs to repair and heal and grow. It's also a good idea to do a workout right before you have your big meal. And part of that is because muscle contraction on its own actually allows glucose to enter the cell without needing insulin as well. And so if you wanna get more glucose into your muscles, doing a quick workout before you have that big starchy meal at night is going to help with that. And it's also going to help keep your insulin lower. So try it out. I hope you guys got a lot out of this video. Insulin is such an important topic because so many people are insulin resistant and pushing on diabetes. And if they could just take some time in the day to actually reduce the fat intake, especially the polyunsaturated fat intake, and have a little bit of an undereating phase where they're only eating uh, fruits and healthy sugars along with a little bit of bone broth, I guarantee you that these people would see a massive improvement in their insulin sensitivity. Again, fructose is not 
the demon molecule that causes insulin resistance and diabetes. It's been painted that way, but that's not really the truth. It's just a contextual matter. Fructose in the wrong setting can cause some of those things to happen, but it's really not the fructose directly that's causing it. It's more of the environment that is happening in. If you do the things in this video the way that I've described, you won't have to worry about that. So let me know in the comments how you uh, like this if you try it out. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more videos. I got a lot more good stuff coming out. Um, give me the thumbs up if you like this video and share it with anyone who is interested in insulin, insulin sensitivity, and improving their health in general. I also have a Patreon account in the About section of this video. If you feel like throwing me a few bucks for this information, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, no obligation. With that, we are through for this video. I will talk to you guys again soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please try this out and enjoy it and let me know what you think. All right, peace.